I'm going to start with one basic observation. Right now in the city of Minneapolis, we are less safe because Jacob Fry is mayor. And when we're not safe, what do we do? We need to do something different and better. And what that means is we need a holistic, whole system approach to public safety. Jacob Fry as mayor has failed to deliver on two key promises. First, he's failed to reduce crime. Second, he's failed to reform police. The reason he's failed to do so is because he is beholden to the status quo. And the status quo is not the way we make progress toward a safer Minneapolis. That's why I support a whole system approach to public safety that includes policing. And a whole system approach that includes policing means that we ask police to do less so we can have them focus on what we actually need them to do, which is responding to, investigating, and actually making progress on solving violent crime in our city. Second, we need to rebuild trust with MPD. And rebuilding trust with MPD, it goes way beyond a PR campaign. What it means is true transparency when police have any kind of misconduct in our city and real accountability to the people of Minneapolis. Let me be clear, it is unacceptable in our city of Minneapolis for a child to get shot and killed. It is also unacceptable for police officers to kill someone in our city. And that is why my holistic vision for public safety in Minneapolis is one that will get to the root of the challenge and not just try to stay at the surface. You know, Mayor Fry hasn't seen this way forward. He, in the last few weeks, has put forward his budget and his budget includes status quo funding for ongoing support of our Office of Violence Prevention. He also doesn't see it fit to support a holistic, common sense approach to a public safety system by supporting the public charter amendment. To be honest, I think it's a reckless approach. And that's why I'm running for mayor. I'm running for mayor because now, in this moment in Minneapolis, we need a mayor who can not just listen to, but actually hear what people want to do to move forward and can work within and through our systems of government to make it happen. As a mom, a climate strategist, a former state representative, a former chief resilience officer, a university program director, a small business owner, I have the skill, the experience, and the relationships to work across levels of government and with community to deliver on the Minneapolis that we know is possible. While I've heard a lot of divides and differences about our path forward, underneath all of that is the fact that people love our city of Minneapolis. And I know that tapping into that, we will make it through this moment and make it a real turning point towards a just, safe, resilient city. The question is, what would be your approach to combat ongoing public safety issues? Three minutes, Ms. Well, thank you for this question. It is the question of this campaign. It is the question of this moment in the city of Minneapolis. The questions I get asked when I am out around the city, north, south, east, west, downtown, in the neighborhoods, is what are you going to do about public safety? What are you going to do about policing? And I say public safety and policing are the issues of the campaign, and they are related, but not the same. The next question people want to know is, what are you actually going to do? What are you going to do about public safety? And that's why several months ago in my campaign, my team and I worked with dozens of community leaders and public safety experts to develop a a uh, plan to build community safety and transform policing here in Minneapolis. And this plan, a comprehensive plan, I'm the only candidate who has put one out, includes five key pillars. First, economic security is the foundation of safety in all of our lives. You need to make sure every person in our city has a safe place to come home to, has a job that means they can support their family and put food on the table, bring them to the doctor if they need to. Second, we need a whole system approach to public safety. What that means is that, yes, I support a public safety charter amendment because it enables us to go all in on investing in the things that we know keep people safe. I want to see an Office of Violence Prevention, Fire, Emergency Management, Police, all under the authority of a public safety department with civilian control. Third, we need to invest in young people in our city especially young men. We need to make sure young people see that their city cares about them, that they're wholly enmeshed in who we are as a city and bought into the future of Minneapolis. So they are creating a positive future for themselves and our community as a whole. Fourth, 
we need to unbundle. There's a policy wonky word for you. What it means, we need to ask police to do less so they can focus on what them, we need them to do most. We need to transform policing so it is something that we see as a benefit to our community and where we are completely transparent about police misconduct and completely transparent about the racial injustice in our current city where, for example, black people in our city are arrested and searched at 29 times the rate of white people. That's unacceptable. We need to name it and we need to fix it. Finally, the fifth pillar of my plan is active leadership. As your mayor, I will step forward into and through this work with you and I will look to other places around the country. We are not the only city dealing with this. I will work with groups like Cities United, like the Center for Justice and Policing. I'll look to places like Syracuse and Denver and Berkeley where they are figuring out different and better ways to keep every person, every person in our community safe. And that is the foundational value of how I will approach public safety. Everybody in our city, regardless of race, income, age, zip code, gender, or level of ability, deserves to feel and be safe. That's not the Minneapolis we live in now. And as mayor, that is the vision of Minneapolis. I will be working alongside and with you to create. At Kate Knuth, the question, what is the scale of funding at the city level to address climate change locally that you would like to see? Where should this money come from? And how should it be equitably distributed? And relatedly, how will you help the city residents better prepare for extreme weather, weather long-term and in emergencies? Three minutes. Well, thank you for the question and thank you for the shout out. I don't feel like I need to prove my expertise on climate given the comments by the other candidates. Um, I wanna start with the fact that the climate era is here, the era of the climate crisis is here and we've all felt it in Minneapolis. I don't know about you, but I did not like having to learn how to figure out how to check air quality in my city on a regular basis. I did not like telling my daughter she could not go out to play one evening because the air quality was too bad and it was unhealthy for her and her little lungs and for every other kid in our community. So the question to me is not how much should go to climate change in the budget, it is how do we take on the climate crisis with the scale and with the urgency necessary, necessary so we are doing our part here in Minneapolis and making sure every family and neighborhood in our city overall is prepared for what's to come. And that means we look at every single budget through the lens of climate change whether it's how we invest our public, um, how we invest our public works, how we invest in our buildings, how we invest in our public safety system. It needs to understand that we are moving through the era of the, of the climate crisis. That's why I will soon be putting forward a Minneapolis Green New Deal because it will help us meet the challenge of the moment and of frankly, the rest of our lives. So what does that look like in practice? What, let's take it down, what does it look like? First climate justice. And by climate justice at the city level, I mean some neighborhoods are less prepared to navigate the climate change era. Neighborhoods that were redlined that now have people with lower income and more people of color on hot days are up to 10 degrees hotter than other neighborhoods. We need to invest in white roofs. We need to invest in an urban tree canopy. We need to invest in things that we know will keep people safer in communities more highly impacted. Second, we need to take on natural gas. Natural gas is 41% of the emissions in our city. Right now, we ask people to figure out insulation and efficiency, find your utility, there's all these programs. That's hard. How do we mobilize at the scale necessary? We as a city, as mayor, I will convene and figure out with a team of experts, community leaders, people on the ground, how to use all of the resources we have to focus going house by house, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood to do the work on insulation, electrification, to make our houses less costly to run for families, more comfortable to live in, and less harmful impact on the climate. Third, we need to take on climate resilience. We have already felt the impacts. When Mayor Fry took office, I was our city's chief resilience officer. I told him at the time, our city does not have a climate resilience strategy. He said, well, that's a problem. I said, yes, it is. We need to work on that. Uh, St. Paul released its first climate resilience strategy in 2019. What has Mayor Fry done on climate resilience? Nothing, as far as I can see. That's unacceptable given the experience of heat and smoke and huge rain events in our city. So I look forward to working with you all, with bringing together our whole community to make us the world leader as a northern city full of the diverse, the smart, the capable, 
the committed people that make up Minneapolis, we can make this city a safe, resilient place to live for every single person in it. Um, my question is, uh, we all know that we're on stolen land, right? Everyone here, raise your hand if you know we're on stolen Indian land, right? Um, and we have native homeless. That should not be, ever. Would all of you consider land back? We are in a paradigm shift since George Floyd. Um, would you consider giving Powderhorn Park, Fairworth Park, or Minnehaha Park back to the natives so we can eliminate our homeless population and we can create jobs, green jobs, uh, treatment for our homeless? Would you be willing to give land back? That's my question. Well, thank you for the question and thank you for your leadership with AIM. It's really important going back decades in this city. I know this is the place where it started. So um, I think we need to consider land back. And I think with East Phillips, Urban Farm is a great example. You know, one of my real frustrations with that site is an absence of mayoral leadership that has basically resulted in pitting city staff against neighbors in a community that has been over by pollution, overburdened by pollution and harmed in various ways by city decisions for decades. We need a mayor who's gonna work in partnership with community to not force the question the way it was and to actually find financing and support to actually move the project forward. So that's a, a potential example right in front of us that I think there's been extremely, um, like been wonderful community leadership. Um, another part of it that, that this is not a, uh, the question you asked, but I think it's related is making sure that when I am mayor, I am working um, government to government with tribal leadership and using the office to push on and protect treaty rights. So I have long opposed line three as an example of this and water protectors up north and um, indigenous leaders across our, our state and frankly now country are coming to say no, it is not acceptable to build a pipeline through indigenous land potentially harming water and Monoman wild rice, such an important cultural um, food, foundation of culture for indigenous people in our community. As far as homelessness, um, we need to be meeting unhoused people in our, neighbor, in our community with empathy and respect, and we need to ramp up supports to move people from being unhoused into housing that works for them. We actually have some decent providers, but they have not been invested in enough, and we have not built the scale of response needed in Minneapolis. There's been some great examples of leasing or buying hotels, moving from hotels into homelessness, given the housing and therefore homelessness uh, crisis that we've been experiencing in Minneapolis. We need to think bigger and with more compassion and empathy and focus on what works at the root. So thank you. Bujou, my name is Cassandra Holmes, and I'm a resident here at Little Earth of United Tribes. Um, so Kate has touched a lot about um, the East Phillips Indoor Urban Farm Project, and also talked a lot about how we are one, like in the county, this area is the polluted, most polluted in a section of Northside, um, polluted areas. And it is the most diverse and uh, BIPOC community, poorest community, um, to speak plainly. But my question is this, um, how many of you, um, others, know about the East, uh, East Phillips Indoor Urban Farm right here at the Roof Depot site where they plan on, the city plans on adding more pollution toward, uh, more pollution here in our community. They're pretty much signing our death sentence. I wanna know what you know about it, what you think about it, and I really want an honest answer because Jacob Fry in the past before he was mayor looked me in the face and told me he supported it and then once he got into office, never gave us the time or day again. And actually vetoed or voted against anything that we try to do. So I wanna know if, how you guys are gonna hold yourself accountable to us as a community when you guys are on platforms that we give you to tell us what you wanna do for us and then when you get in office, how are you gonna hold yourself accountable to make sure that you follow through with what you guys promised to do? Thank you. Well, thank you, Cassandra, for the question. And I, thank you to the East Phillips community who I have come to visit um, with one, actually the, one of my first in-person campaign events was to learn about the East Phillips Urban Farm and how it is, the vision of it is to build 
um, a place to build community, to build safety, to build food, and to build justice in the face of a community that has way too, for, for, for decades, borne way too much of the burden of industry and traffic and pollution in our city. And so absolutely, I will be a partner in figuring out how to move the East Phillips urban farm uh, vision forward. You know, as far as what I know about it, um, from the challenges, because this, this has been, like from an actual governance perspective, there are some challenges. The city has said they have spent $12.5 million of uh, water utility money that would need to be paid back. So that's money we need to figure out how to pay for. And I think we can do that as a community. And we as a community should embrace the vision that East Phillips has come together to create. And as mayor, I will absolutely be a partner in figuring out the financing, figuring out the legalities, and figuring out um, how to support the community vision moving forward in East Phillips. Uh, in terms of holding myself accountable, people will ask me, what do you hope at the end of four years as mayor? And at the most foundational level, I want each of you, every person in our city of Minneapolis, to believe that our city government is your partner and ally in making the community you want to live in. And the only way to do that and to achieve that vision as mayor is to absolutely hold myself, my team, my fellow electeds accountable, and to ask people in the community to show up with education of, elect, of, of me as mayor, with ideas, with asks for support. And if I screw up, tell me that too, and come forward with accountability. I will embrace that. I have been an elected official. I can tell you stories where Time's I screwed up. up. And I look forward to working with you to build East Phillips and to be the kind of elected official that builds trust in our city government. Next. Well, thank you for sticking it out with us today. I really appreciate you taking the time to hear from and learn from us as candidates. And I have uh, look forward to learning and uh, talking with you more. I'm running for mayor because we are in a moment in Minneapolis where we can make a potential historic turning point towards a city that is truly just that acts in a way that the racial disparities we have are unacceptable, that builds true climate resilience, and that shows our country what it looks like to build a holistic public safety system that doesn't rely wholly on policing, but includes policing. You know, when I thought about running for mayor, um, it was because I was frustrated with our current mayor's leadership. He has not helped us as a city as a moment because he uh, meet the moment because he has not meant the moment we're in. And I'll be honest, I was like, should I step forward? I'm a white woman, does this make sense? Like, let's be really real. We are a diverse, vibrant city who needs leadership that is going to bring us together, not just towards unity, but to create justice on the path towards unity. We need to create justice on the path towards unity. So I ask for your vote. I ask for your support. And most, I ask for you to dig deep and believe in and find the courage to build a Minneapolis that we know we can have and that we are all capable of building together.